Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back to Gospel Truth TV. We're so, so excited that you could join us. And it's a new year, but so far it doesn't feel like one. Let me just give us a recap of uh, what the numbers are today. I mean, to, as it stands today, uh, the number of cases that we've seen in the U.S. about 22 million cases. 22 million, and of that we've seen almost 400,000 deaths. From the last time we spoke, that's almost twice as much that we saw, um, I think, back in the summer when we were having this conversation. So, right off the bat, Michael, is uh, COVID a hoax? COVID is not a hoax. So, what are you seeing in the emergency room? I can now? attest to that. Yeah. So, uh, I'm an emergency medicine resident, and yeah. so every single day we're seeing both active uh, COVID patients who are symptomatic and also just people who are there for toe pain right. who are incidentally COVID positive. Right. So, it's, it's right. become so endemic. Right. It's now like you have COVID plus whatever else you have. So. You know, we're seeing people literally die every single day from COVID. Yeah. Um, there's so many complications, so it's definitely not a hoax. And I know there's still a lot of people who think that, but right. it's really not. Yeah, yeah. I know we were talking about this earlier about almost 4,000 deaths a day. That's almost a, uh, I think as you called it, a 9-11 a every day. Right, almost. exactly. Almost, almost 4,000 people died during 9-11. And it's like as if 9-11 was happening every single day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's insane to think about. Significantly, significantly insane. So, Uyi, so your thoughts... Um, as a pediatrician or at least a pediatric resident, you know, what are you seeing with kids? Yeah, um, so a lot of people think that COVID isn't affecting kids, but um, one thing you have to focus on when it comes to COVID is not just when you have the infection, but the complications that come right. after in both adults and children. So um, in children, what we're seeing is this syndrome called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. So about two or three weeks after kids recover from COVID, we're seeing this like inflammatory process that like kind of takes over the body, um, many organs in the body, um, including the heart. Um, and you have kids who are like super active and not just kids, teenagers, adolescents um, who were super active, super um, athletic, uh, not being able to play sports even anymore because of the way that this inflammatory syndrome has affected their heart. Well, wow, that's a good point that you mentioned. I remember reading about a basketball player who collapsed on the court yeah. and it was found there after that he had, he had had COVID prior exactly, yeah. and um, had some sort of heart condition after that. Exactly. So not just the heart, but um, people having to be on blood thinners because right. of like they're so prone to clots now that they have had COVID. You know? Obviously, since then, the public experts have said we should do three things. You know, some people like to call it the three W's. Uh, wash your hands. Yep. Watch your distance in terms of social distance. Exactly. Watch your distance. And then uh, the third one was to wear to, to wear a mask. Wear you know, mask. The, the three exactly. W's. You know, yeah. uh, watch your distance, wash your hands, and wear a mask. And obviously, at some point in time, this became politicized. Unfortunately, yeah. people decided they didn't want to wear a mask. Right. I think yeah. most people are kind of coming along way right that way. And so, then. The public experts also told us that, hey, listen, guys, the one thing that we think that's going to bring an end to this pandemic mm -hmm. are these vaccines. Yeah. Yeah. And while there have been challenges in terms of the distributions and all the technicalities of that, one of the bigger challenges that a lot of folks are not talking about is a huge hesitation yeah. and a huge apprehension for a lot of people from getting these vaccines. Exactly. Um, why do you think that is? You know, I think there's a lot of reasons, especially in people of color, people yeah. in marginalized groups. We've yeah. seen a lot of hesitation on getting the vaccine. And honestly, I can't blame a lot of them, you yeah. know. And historically, there's been a lack of transparency in yeah. how the vaccines are made right. and what they're supposed to do. Um, but I think one thing that's different about this one is that there's been full transparency yeah. and there's early studies, even though the data isn't all the way finished, but there's still early data that's fully transparent on how the, how the vaccine works right. and what the efficacy has been so and far. It, and it's been safe. And it's been safe, correct, exactly. Correct, correct, So we, I know we, Michael talked a little bit about some of the issues historically. Yeah. Um, is that something you can speak to as well? Uh, oh, absolutely, man. Um, like Mike said, uh, it's not, it's not um, out of the realm of possibility for people of color, like black people, you know, for us to be hesitant when it comes to taking this vaccine. I don't blame people. Yeah. One thing I always tell people is that if you have a doctor that's forcing something on you, forcing a vaccine on you, right? I'm a pediatric resident. Like I try to, you know, encourage my families to take right. vaccines, but if they're not comfortable with it, I can't force them, right? Like doctors are supposed to work with you, right. but in marginalized communi communities, um, there's been a history right. of the way that this country has um, shown us that they don't value our bodies, right? There's a book called Medical Apartheid that I think everybody should read. It's by Harriet uh, Washington. Yeah. Um, and it talks about from colonial times till now, um, the medical experimentation on black bodies. A lot of people know about 
um, the Tuskegee experiment. Um, we talk about Henrietta Lacks and how they used her cells without her consent. But there's even like lesser known stories um, outside the medical community like Dr. Marion um, Sims uh, or Sim who uh, was an OBGYN who a lot of the techniques that we use right now in that field of OB um, and gynecology were created um, with experimentation on black women, black slaves, you know. Um, so this whole uh, tr lack of trust that we have in the medical community, um, it's, it's, it comes from a real place and I, yeah. and I, and I yeah, want people yeah. to understand that. I think that's that. important. That's important that's to, so when we can be a little bit more empathetic, if you will, yeah, yeah, people absolutely. a little bit more, ah, uh, I don't know about that quite yeah, yet, absolutely. you know, yeah. but, but, but speaking of which, the apprehension we see, however, yeah is not just with people of color. People of color have significant apprehension. When you look at the data, I think it's, you know, we, the people of color are down the line when it comes to, you know, why they don't want to get <laughs> right. it. But even people who are not, you know, of color, if you will, right. like, you know, are Caucasian brothers and sisters, are Latino brothers and sisters, yeah. they all are There's people, a lot of, a lot of apprehension. Yeah. Even like the Christian community, right? Like the whole Mark of the Beast thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Right. yeah exactly. So many yeah. chicks, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh 5G, oh Mark of the Beast, things like that. Yeah. How many people, uh, you know, had your mom or your parents have been telling you stuff about stuff to see on WhatsApp? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. Oh, the WhatsApp, WhatsApp chain messages about how this vaccine oh, yeah. is really the devil trying to get it. I'm like, mom. Yeah, I know, right? I tell stop. me about it. Tell yeah. me about it. Tell me stop. about it. So speaking of the disinformation, mm -hmm. and a lot of that is in part one of the reasons why we've seen right. some of this misapprehension. One of the biggest concerns and questions that people have said is that, oh my God, this vaccine is gonna change my DNA. Exactly. How does this vaccine work? Does it change our DNA? Right, so yeah, so that's a great point. So this yeah. is specifically an mRNA vaccine. Right. And so anyone here is RNA, that sounds like DNA. Oh, it's getting to my cells, it's going right. to my, you know, it's changing my DNA. I don't want it to change who I am. And so, so first we just gotta take it back a little bit to the right. science, right? So what is mRNA? mRNA is not DNA, mm -hmm. it's called messenger RNA. It's literally a messenger protein that goes into a cell and it's, very, it's in and out. Right. All it does is go, tells the cell a message, and then the cell responds by making more protein. Great. Now, the, that, that mRNA, does it go into your DNA or it not? It does not at all. Does it, go does, into not. The, does it go into the nucleus of the cell? It does not go into the nucleus. So it stays in the outside of the cell called the cytoplasm, right. where it allows uh, the machinery to make more of the protein. So what some really, science, some really smart scientists did was map out the entire genome sequence of COVID, right? right? And so they found that there's this one specific part called the spike protein. Right. And they're like, hmm, if we can code specifically for this spike protein, because we found that this spike protein is what's allowing the virus to get into the cells. So how about we find that specific part, make, a, make that into an mRNA, and then allow that to be introduced into our bodies, not to go into our DNA, but to be made in the cells so that we can create an antibody, antibodies towards it. Correct. So the next time you actually see the real virus in its full form, right. it's like, oh, we know this guy. Right. We know this spike right. protein. We already have the antibodies there. So the COVID virus will then try to uh, bind to your cells and your antibodies have already attached to that spike protein that it already knows and doesn't allow the, uh, the virus to infect the cell. And correct, and cause the, 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 the issue that COVID usually would cause. Exactly. In other words, even if you're vaccinated, you actually could get into contact with somebody with COVID, but you won't respond, right. you wouldn't get sick because you have antibodies. And so, I mean, hey, excellent, excellent point, doctor. Let's speak a little bit about the side effects. That's another issue that most people have. Oh my gosh, you know, what kind of side effect am I gonna have? Are those side effects, man, I've heard about them side effects. So. What are, your, what are your thoughts in, in terms of what you've read um, and, and, and uh, in experience yeah. in terms of side effects? <laughs> so um, like Mike said earlier, these studies have actually been really, really transparent. Um, I can speak uh, specifically towards the Pfizer and the Moderna studies, right? right? Um, so the top three side effects that people have seen like after getting these um, vaccines are fatigue, fever, and headache. Um, and a lot of times uh, that happens after the second dose. Some people it happened after the first. Um, in extremely like rare cases, we've seen in the news that some people have had allergic reactions. But anybody who you've read who has had a severe allergic reaction um, is somebody who has a history of what we call anaphylactic reactions. So right. these people are required to take EpiPens around because they've had allergic reactions to other things. Um, we could talk about how we felt after the vaccine. Right, right, right. So just full disclosure. So 
Everybody here has been bashing at me. Yeah, right? yeah. Have you got your second? First and second dose. Yeah, first and second dose. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that. So, yeah. Mike, so um, how did you feel when you were getting bashing at? So I, I was actually pretty anxious, to be honest. You know, I, full disclosure, had I had COVID about two weeks prior to getting my first vaccine. Yeah. So I was like, man, I already have antibodies from the actual virus. Yeah. And now I'm going to get the vaccine two weeks later. Right. Will I, like, begin to come sick? Because my body's like, oh, it's you again, <laughs> you know? And so... But I got the first dose and really just had just some arm soreness. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. I didn't have any, any symptoms. And two days ago, I got my second vaccine. Yeah. And at, uh, maybe about at the 12 hour mark, I started feeling really fatigued, had some mild headache for maybe about 10 hours. And also a lot of my friends who got the second vaccine kind of endured similar symptoms or a little bit worse symptoms. Yeah. Um, and uh, but now I'm fine. I'm about 48 hours out. I feel completely normal. And, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. How about yourself, Uri? Uh, yeah, same. Uh, after my first dose, maybe about a couple of hours after, I had like a really sore arm. Yeah. But that's not out of the ordinary for when I usually get like my flu vaccine yearly. Uh, and then a couple of days ago, I got my second dose, and I've heard that that's when a lot of the side effects actually happen. Um, I think right after I had some nausea and the headache, and I, and I kind of expected that a little bit. Um, and then about, I would say maybe 18 hours, maybe the 18 to 20 hour mark afterwards, I was like really fatigued, like really fatigued. It felt like I could feel my body mounting that immune response. Um, but after that, you know, um, maybe like an eight to 10 hour period, I started to feel more like myself and, you know, now I feel great, you know? Yeah, yeah, same here. I, I got my first dose, uh, I think it was December 16th, like shoot, right when it came out, I'm like, hey, sign me up. I've done the research, I've done the science studying and I, I had felt pretty comfortable about it. And Part of what we're trying to share, though, now is that, yes, you know, um, and by the way, the side effects are actually normal yeah. and are actually a good thing. Yeah. It just means that your immune system it means it's working. It's working. It's doing its job. And but they're transient, they're temporary. And so hopefully um, this encourages you all to, you know, alleviate some anxiety, light up all the disinformation that indeed this is safe in view of the trials that we've seen, in view of our experiences. So really quickly and really lastly, if you had somebody who you knew was on the fence right now, say for example, was your mom right. or your uncle, what would you say to them right now, right now? Yeah, so for me, um, my mom, I actually talked to my mom and I, I educated her on what the vaccine is. And she was initially like hesitant, like, oh no, don't get it son, you know, it's gonna change you. I'm like, no mom, this is how it works. Yeah. And she understood yes. and that actually encouraged her to go get the cool. vaccine. Oh, she did. She got yeah, it. and I'm glad she did because she's a, she's a healthcare worker as well. She's a nurse and so I, I really wanted her to be safe because she's around older populations. Right, right. So uh, I just kind of, I think education is the most important Absolutely. thing. I agree. I think that uh, yeah, I mean, I won't take Mike's example because my mom is a nurse as well and she had the same apprehensions and after me talking to her, yeah. she decided to go ahead and sign up for the vaccine. But I would most more so want to speak to like some of my patients, right? Like I have these conversations all the time right. with parents who don't want to give their children vaccinations. And that's and just the, not just for COVID, I would presume. Not for, yeah, for any vaccinations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the important thing there is just to develop a relationship, right? At the end of the day, it is the parent's decision whether they want to give a child a vaccine or not. Um, so it's just developing that relationship and continuing that relationship so that maybe eventually um, you would have developed so much rapport that they understand that this is probably for their child's best you. interest. Exactly. Um, and one of their major apprehensions is whether vaccines are going to cause autism. Right. And there have been countless studies oh, that have shown gosh. that there's no link Absolutely. to vaccinations and autism. Huge, huge, huge conspiracies out there. Absolutely. About the, what we call the anti-vaccine. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Man, man, that's serious. Huge. And I actually would recommend another book for those parents who are a little apprehensive specifically about the COVID vaccine or any vaccines um, is a book called Vaccines Did Not Cause Rachel's Autism. So there is a mm -hmm. vaccine scientist. Um, in Texas, his name is Dr. Peter Hotez, and his daughter actually has autism. Um, so he wrote this book for parents, for healthcare professionals, for everybody, just to say, hey, like, I'm a vaccine scientist, and I can show you, like, vaccines did not cause my daughter's autism. That's awesome, yeah. awesome. My, my, my contact, my mom and my mother-in-law as well, were a little apprehensive, but one of the reasons why my mother-in-law was apprehensive is because she had initially thought that this was the vaccine was introducing a live virus into her system. And so when we educated her and let her know that, hey, listen, this is not a virus, it's not a live virus. Matter of fact, it is so brilliant that, as you point out, it's an mRNA that kind of signals for a spike protein right. and it is actually transit. The mRNA actually leaves your system. The idea yes. then that she didn't have to get a live virus in the system, right. that was what did the trick. So as you pointed out, it was COVID, but as you pointed out, it was relationship and trust that she could trust us knowing that we had our best interest at heart, man. So this has been so, so good, guys. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, you can take a look at our 
social media handles at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to direct messages. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions with empathy, with sensitivity, and um, with all the education you need. So God bless you guys. I look forward to seeing you next time.